In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to keep your silver and gold as safe and secure and protected as possible. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and staying safe. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I wanted to talk about silver and also gold and three tips that I have for keeping your silver and gold as secure and safe as possible. But really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there, go check it out. The link will be in the description. And if you want to get some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel, I would really, really, really appreciate it. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. But today, I wanted to talk about silver security or silver safety and keeping it as protected as you possibly can. Now, I want to talk about this for a variety of different reasons, and I'm sure some people may or may not be able to learn quite a bit from a video like this. So I want to talk about, number one, going for silver that you and everyone else can trust. Silver that is desired, respected, trusted, sought after, recognizable, popular, such as, I talk about it all the time, the Silver Eagle, or the Silver Maple, or the Britannia, or the Philharmonic, or the Libertad. Coins like this. These are popular. They're recognizable. Everyone knows what they are. Everybody knows where they're from. Everybody is familiar with coins like this if, of course, you're in the precious metal world. Unfortunately, a beautiful, beautiful piece of silver that is not necessarily recognizable or trusted by virtually everyone would be poured silver. This right here, for example. There's all types of poured silver out there and I've always been a big fan of how it looks. It just kind of reminds me of something that you'd find in a treasure chest or something. It just looks like something that a pirate would have. I don't know, I've always been a big fan of how poured silver looks. But unfortunately, somebody who's not familiar with this, I mean this right here, it says Atlantis Mint. Somebody who doesn't know what Atlantis Mint is might say, okay, it's silver in color. It says one troy ounce of three nines fine silver, but how do I know that it's not another metal? Or how do I know that it isn't in fact silver, but has something like copper or lead or some other miscellaneous metal on the inside, which gives it the weight? And of course you can drill a hole in it. Of course you can test it, but not everybody has the ability to do so, especially right off the bat. So. Poured silver may or may not be in the question for you. You might not know what that is, but you might not want to go for the higher premium coins such as the Eagle and the Britannia and the Libertas. I hate referring to them as higher premium, but as of the last couple of months, they've all been cranked up quite a bit, especially over the last week. So what about generic silver? What about simple, non-government minted, not government backed basic generic secondary market silver rounds such as potentially the buffalo round or the sunshine round i have one right here this would be my half troy ounce sunshine round i have a five ounce and one of my 10 ounce silver bars right here all sunshine the cool thing about these right here is that they have a security feature on the back and they carry a lower premium Mint Mark SI, if you see that on the back of a silver round or a bar, you know right off the bat that you can very easily check and prove that it's authentic. I have one of these Mint Mark SI decoder lenses. This is something that I've had for a very long time. It's been something that I've been talking about for a very long time. I love this, it's been a lifesaver. And it cost me, I think, maybe about $15, and it lasts forever. It's a little bit more solid than... I, I wish it was a little bit more flimsy. I feel like if you kept this in your wallet and sat down, it might actually snap. But it's pretty durable, and if you hold it up like this, it looks like you've been drinking a little bit too much. But the cool thing about this decoder lens is that if you flip over the pieces of silver, and I showed this off very briefly in yesterday's video, and I wanted to use this as one of my three safety and security tips in today's video. If you flip it over and have the Mint Mark SI circle right there, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this because it has a, a capsule. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, probably not. You're gonna probably have to just take my word for it, I guess, but I did take it out of the capsule when I first got it just to check, just to make sure, just to play it safe. 
But this right here, which does not have a capsule, look what happens if you put this right over top. Hey, really quick, I interrupt this video to let you know I am going to be going live in the VIP club tonight around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a couple of hours to talk about stacking, talk about prepping, and talk about pretty much everything under the sun. Link in the description if you want to join. It says the word valid. Proof of authenticity. Let me see if I can get it clear. There we go. It's clear enough. So that's one way of playing it a little bit safe. Just to make sure, just to assure yourself that it is in fact real or assure a buyer that it is in fact real. That way nobody feels like they're getting gypped or ripped off or anything like that or, or picking up something that isn't truly silver. Let's see, how can I do it? It's not really showing up on camera all that well. But there we go. It's kind of showing up. Proof of authenticity. That would be tip number one. Tip number two would be keep your silver well hidden. The way I have my silver on display right here, it might not be the greatest idea in the world to leave it out on the table like this. Leave it all out and about. For anybody visiting your house to see, it might not be the greatest idea. You're probably going to want to lock up your silver. Now, this is where it gets a little bit controversial because some people hate the idea of a safe with a burning passion. Some people don't believe in keeping your silver in a safe. You could, of course, bury your silver underground. Some people, believe it or not, some people actually do this. That's not something that I really believe in. It's not really something that I could ever see myself doing, but it's definitely an option. Just make sure you are using a container that you're supposed to be using to store silver inside of if you're going to bury it underground. But if you're gonna do it the way a lot of other people do and keep it in a safe, I would suggest getting yourself a safe if you don't already have one get yourself a safe that's larger than what you think you need let me say that again get yourself a safe that's larger than what you think you need if you have only a little bit of silver if you're only picking up a little bit of silver at a time and you know that your stack of silver and gold is not going to be growing exponentially it's not like the little pile of silver is going to turn into mount everest of silver anytime soon so maybe you feel like all you really need is a small safe nothing crazy. If that's what you think you need, I would suggest going one size up. If you're going to go with the small, you should probably go with the medium. If you think you need the medium, you should probably go with the large. If you think you need the large, maybe go with the monster of a safe or get two safes. That's my honest opinion from my perspective. Not a professional, not a financial advisor. Nothing on this channel is financial advice. Do your own research, form your own opinions, make your own decisions based off of your conclusions, not mine. But in addition to locking it up in a safe, I would hide the safe somewhere in the house or somewhere on your property, somewhere where you know where it is, somewhere that isn't just out in the open. You walk in the front door and all of a sudden there's a big giant safe next to your TV. It's probably not a good idea. You want to have a well hidden safe. And on top of having a well hidden safe, you're going to want to bolt it down to the ground. And not only do you want to bolt it down to the ground, you want to make sure that it weighs probably enough to where you would have an incredibly difficult time moving it, even if it was empty. So something that I've done, something that I've been talking about for a couple years now, if you don't have all that much silver and all of your silver put together doesn't really weigh a whole lot, maybe throw a couple of weight plates in there, some 45s or some 25s if that's all you have, just to add a little bit more weight. But regardless, you're gonna wanna bolt it to the ground no matter what. You want it to be well hidden and you want it to be big enough to where you almost feel like it's too big for what you need because trust me, a couple of years, five, 10, 15 years down the road, you're gonna be happy that you got a bigger safe than what you thought you needed rather than filling your safe completely up and then having to buy a second one. Just my opinion. And that right there would be tip number two. Tip number three is to be very, very selective with who you tell about your silver, about your gold. It is not something that you wanna go and broadcast, which I know sounds a little bit ridiculous, 
coming from the guy who has a YouTube channel who tells thousands of people 365 days a year about silver and gold, but the people on the internet don't know where to find me in real life, and the people who know me in real life have no idea that I have silver and gold. And I do it that way for a reason. The people that I know in real life, my friends, a majority of my family members, my coworkers, acquaintances, I do not let them know. And it's not out of paranoia. It's not that I choose not to tell anyone because I think they're gonna break into my house. That's not why I don't tell them. The number one reason why I don't tell them is just simply because I don't need to. It's not anybody's business. Why would I walk around telling people that I have money at home? Walking around broadcasting the fact that you have silver in your safe is virtually no different than walking around telling people that you have currency in the bank. Very, very different, but very, very similar. That's the way I've always seen it. The only people I tell are the people who absolutely need to know. And there's a select few people who know, who don't necessarily need to know, but that's because they're stacking silver too. I know a couple people in real life who have their fair share of silver. They've been stacking longer than I've been stacking silver for. But I don't go around telling people who just simply don't need to know. I don't tell people for absolutely no reason. I don't tell people just for the sake of telling them. In fact, I can count on one hand how many people who know me in real life know about the silver. Now, if you are married, your spouse probably knows, your, your wife or your husband, they probably know, because it's probably out of respect. You probably don't want to make financial decisions behind their back, but that's between the two of you. But you want to be very, very selective, not only for the simple fact of that just people just really just don't need to know, but on top of that, you don't know who they're going to tell. And you can very forwardly and assertively tell them do not tell anyone. This is between you and I. But just because you tell them not to tell anybody doesn't mean that they can't innocently talk about it. Let's just say if I go and tell one of my friends, hey, I got a whole bunch of silver and gold at my house. I keep it locked up in my safe for when I'm not home. I know it's secure. I, I know it's protected. If I went and tell my friend that, who's to say that a couple of weeks, couple of months down the road that he or she isn't going to bump into someone else who just somehow talks about gold. Maybe they got a new gold necklace or something like that. Or maybe they got a watch as a Christmas present. They're like, oh, I don't know. I wouldn't spend that type of money on myself. This watch is really expensive. It has gold or this chain's made of gold. Like, wow, that's a really nice piece of gold. Hey, speaking of gold, remember DYDSS from high school? He told me a couple weeks ago. He's got a bunch of gold in his house. You know DYDSS. He lives on 123 Sesame Street. He works 8.30 in the morning to 7.30 p.m. He's not home during those hours. You know where he lives. You know when he's not home. Yeah, that guy. Got a bunch of gold, valuable precious metals in his house. You don't want to accidentally tell someone who's going to accidentally tell someone. You tell your friend you got a couple gold coins. They go and tell somebody that you have a bunch of gold coins. They tell somebody that you got millions and millions of dollars. They tell someone that you're the CEO of Tesla. It's like a game of telephone. Word travels fast. Word of mouth advertising spreads like wildfire. So you wanna be very selective with the people you tell. And by the way, I'm not telling you that you gotta keep it a secret. You can keep it a secret if you want, or you can tell everybody that you come in contact with that you got a bunch of silver, a bunch of gold coins, rounds, bars, stacked up from the floor all the way up to the ceiling across the wall. You have a whole room dedicated to the silver. Everyone at the grocery store needs to know. People at the dentist's office. You could tell everyone in the world if you want to. That's on you. These are just a couple of tips for safety and security. And here's a bonus, tip number four. Get a German Shepherd, trust me. Excellent guard dogs. But I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know, what are your thoughts on safety and security? In terms of tip number one, making sure it's silver or gold that you trust from a seller that you trust or a buyer that you trust. Maybe a coin that has somewhat of a security feature like the 2021 Britannias, unfortunately, I do not have any silver Britannias. I do, just not 2021. But the new ones have this nice little security feature in the bottom left right there. You can see the Trident logo, and then if you turn it a certain way, it turns into a padlock. Let's see if I can actually get it. I don't know how well it's going to focus. There we go. Just a security feature. 
or the proof of authenticity, Mint Mark SI, if you were to get yourself a decoder lens. Tip number two, keep it well hidden. Maybe bolt down a safe to the floor in a very well hidden area. Make sure it's bigger than what you think you need. Make sure you weigh it down. If you don't have enough silver and gold to weigh it down, maybe throw a couple of dumbbells in there. Give it a little bit extra weight on top of bolting it down to the ground. Or would you rather bury it on your property somewhere? And of course, tip number three, be selective with who you tell. I want you guys to head on down in the comments and let me know, how many people do you know in real life that are aware that you stack silver and gold? Maybe you let a couple people know, maybe a couple friends, family members, maybe they just see it as a tiny little coin collection. Maybe they don't know the extent or the severity that you have potentially hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars packed into silver and gold. Or do you go around telling virtually everyone, 5, 10, 15, 20 people? Do a bunch of people know that you stack silver and gold? Have you learned your lesson? Maybe you told people in the past and it backfired on you? Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to my tips on safety and security for the precious metals. And if anybody's interested in joining the Precious Metals VIP Club, it's where I can do things on my own terms, not on YouTube's terms, my terms. I'm hosting privately held live streams. They're smaller, easier to manage. Don't forget, I will be going live tonight around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come hang out. I'm also doing giveaways, discounts, personalized promo codes, shout outs, deal alerts when silver and gold is on sale on a variety of different websites. And of course, you can watch all my videos early and commercial free. Come join the Precious Metals VIP Club. It'll be the first link in the description. You're invited. I'd be happy to have you. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. If you guys like me, hit that subscribe button like a Karen hits a bus window. And while you're at it, also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there. Go check it out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit 2,000 subscribers. We just hit 1,600, and I appreciate that. And if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have some precious metal themed t shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs, along with a ton of other products t shirts, hoodies, even stickers, many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations such as the recently released Kraken Stackin' t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug inspired by the beautiful two ounce silver Kraken coin, which by the way is helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for ocean cleanup charity organizations at no additional cost to you. It comes out of my pocket, not yours. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again, what are your thoughts on my three tips for safety and security, keeping your silver and gold as protected as possible? Number one, go for silver that you can trust. Go for silver being sold by someone that you can trust. Maybe something that's government backed, government minted, maybe something with anti-counterfeit technology or security features, or proof of authenticity like sunshine rounds and sunshine bars, mint mark SI. Again, the decoder lens is probably only about 15 bucks or so. Tip number two, keep it well hidden. Bury it underground if that's what you truly want to do. It's not something that I'm into. I'd rather have a safe. We can keep it in a safe like I do. Lock it up. Bolt it down, add some weight, keep it hidden. And of course, and finally, tip number three, be as selective as you could ever possibly be when it comes to telling people about your silver and your gold. Again, word of mouth spreads like wildfire. Somebody could very innocently let one of their friends know, and who knows, if they're going to let their friends know and they let their friends know and then sooner or later everyone went to high school with knows that you have a bunch of silver and gold maybe they are under the impression that you have far more than you actually have head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.